please ask host to give you permission. Eek. Karen, can you record? I don't know that I can do it. Yeah, I, I, it's recording right now. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. <clears throat> well, thank you, everyone. Um, I'm uh, honored to invite uh, to welcome Marita Kip, the Yakama Nation, uh, she's the tribal uh, librarian, library administrator. <clears throat> Marita, I, I'm going to let her say more about uh, what seems a very dynamic library, but um, I want to open it up by uh, recounting some of what uh, some of you may know already around TechSoup and tribal libraries. And um, in a, a quick story, I happened to join, I, I got to know an organization called ATOM, the Association of Tribal Archives, Libraries, and Museums, and um, met uh, uh, their <clears throat> CEO and some others, and, I, and they were having a meeting. And so I joined just out of interest. I am a former archivist myself and recovering archivist. Uh, and uh, I was on the call and they were talking about uh, technology and a number of things. And um, I said, hey, I'm, my name's Kyle Reese. People were introducing them. I said, my name's Kyle, Kyle Reese. I work at TechSoup and you know, let us know how we can uh, help you if, if, if there's any way we can help you. And Marita reached out to me privately on Zoom and said, um, like, what are you doing here? TechSoup, uh, we're not eligible for TechSoup. And, you know, we've been trying to get uh, you guys to to provide, uh, you know, to, to allow us to be eligible. And I said, really, I, I didn't know that. Let me see what I can find out about that. And and there was a long history, and I won't go into to that. But I think for almost 10 years now, Atom and Marita and others had been uh, hoping that TechSoup uh, would support tribal libraries. And I'm pleased to note that we worked through a number of issues and there are several people on this call and others at TechSoup who, who really did a great job to get us to the point where we now are able to support ATOM members. And um, unsurprisingly, Marita was the first person to sign up for uh, TechSoup for, library, for tribal libraries. And she's here today to talk a little bit about uh, um, really her story. And we'd love to hear more about the uh, Yakima Nation, uh, the library, the what you do around technology, um, and um, and really if, uh, really to help us understand uh, what you feel are the needs of tribal libraries in a way that maybe TechSoup can also help out in other ways. So I will turn it over to you, Marida. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Marita Kemp. I'm the library administrator here at the Yakima Nation Library. Um, we're located in Toppenish, Washington, in Washington State. Um, we're not too far from Yakima, so we're probably, probably about 20 miles away. Uh, we still are kind of in a rural area. So some of our issues are internet access, computer access, um, I guess job opportunities for um, technical, you know, technical jobs like information technology and things like that. We don't have a, um, well, there's a college, Heritage University. It's about five miles away. It's a little private college that has grown immensely to help support the community members. Um, I, I was a computer science intern at Heritage, and then I had an internship here at the Yakima Nation Library to help set up their computer lab. And then it just evolved into a career here at the library where I was a computer specialist and then eventually promoted to the library administrator. But as the computer specialist, um, just working with the community, I would see that um, people would not be confident in applying for jobs, um, thinking they didn't have computer skills or they didn't quite know the terminology on the job descriptions. Like they were saying, well, I have to know word processing, 
you know, some old terms that, you know, I don't think you would see on a job description anymore. And I was like, well, you do that every day because they come in, use the computer, type letters and things like that. And so that's some of the things that I would assist um, people setting up their email, typing resumes, just all kinds of technical support. Um, but we had a grant through University of Washington that helped um, set up the computer lab here. Um, when I started, they had uh, four computers along the wall and we called them the Gates computers because they were, um, you know, that was when the Gates Foundation was giving computers to all the public libraries. And so we had four of them. And so as a computer specialist, um, that was one of the things that I had to figure out how to shuffle um, people along those computers while at the same time the University of Washington grant was being implemented in the little corner of the library where we were setting up the computer lab. So as we've grown, um, that's what I've tried to meet the demand of our community. So now along that wall where we have had the four computers, we have about uh, 20 computers now, and then we still have the uh, computer lab. Um, and then, so I taught computer classes to computer, um, like computer basics and things like that. Um, let me try and get them to stop back here. <laughs> um, and then we had, um, we had TechSoup for a little while uh, through Washington State Library. Um, and then it stopped. So I was getting really spoiled by the having access to TechSoup. And it was just uh, for a little while. Um, then when it stopped, I didn't have access to the Norton antivirus, the Adobe software, the Microsoft Word, and different things like I was using for the class. So that's where my struggle with TechSoup began because I was trying to get um, software, different things and I couldn't get it. And it's been years, uh, like, cause there was some kind of verification that they had to do for, um, to get to get on TechSoup. So as a tribal library, we were not defined as a public library. So there's some kind of technicality that um, even though we are a public library, but each tribal library is funded by their tribe. So we're not funded like through the tax dollars that everyone, you know, pays. Um, so each tribe funds their tribal library. So, so all the tribal libraries, um, you'll find them at different levels uh, where they're at with technology. Um, I'm in a little digital, um, digital inclusion cohort with ATOM. And uh, we have, there's four of us in there and we're trying to help tribal libraries create a playbook so they can um, get ideas how to set up a computer lab, different things like that. Um, but there's some things that have, came, came out of the, you know, the pandemic, they had the emergency connectivity fund, the affordable, um, was it affordable connectivity, where they can get, you know, a subsidy to help pay for their internet. And so there was another, there's another tribal library in the cohort. And I was like, yeah, you should do this. Um, we have, uh, we have our patrons, they're signing up and they're getting connected. Um, and then she said, they can't even do that. You know, they don't even have, you know, internet, you know, access. So they're like a little further behind with getting, you know, infrastructure and internet set up in their building, um, to their community. And I was like, wow. So that's where we're at different levels. So like TechSoup, like they couldn't even take advantage of it yet because they're still beginning to uh, get, get the ball rolling with the technology. But what we've done, we have support with um, Washington State Library. So they supply us with uh, Microsoft certification info, the access to the curriculum, and then we can also proctor exams. 
There's other um, things included with that, like the Adobe Certified Associate. So that was, um, we also service the um, tribal school and the tribal Head Start. So even though we're not in the same building as our tribal school, because the tribal school doesn't have a library, so um, we also service them. And then we also service the tribal Head Starts. And so the tribal school, the Yakima Nation tribal school, they're trying to um, eventually become like a K through 12 um, tribal school. But right now they're eight, grade eight through 12, and then we have the Head Start centers. So as a part of being a part of the tribal school, they come here every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, and then our multimedia specialist teaches a helps them with their photography in their yearbook class. So through having that connection to the tribal school, we were able to um, get them the Adobe um, Creative Suite at the educational discount, and then they can have access. So each of them have an account to that. But that was kind of a workaround. You know, I would have liked to initially just, you know, from the start, been able to get that from TechSoup, but I wasn't able to. Um, but I have to still look into um, what we're going to um, revisit, you know, obtaining from TechSoup. So we've been working on getting uh, certifications for the community, um, helping them with their um, technology. Uh, skills like helping them be employable, helping you know gain more confidence. Uh, Washington State Library, they're they're providing LinkedIn Learning to all the public libraries here in um, Washington State. So one of the things that why we couldn't do that immediately is because our library software we weren't able to authenticate with our library cards. We just kind of had an internal uh, system. We used to have Destiny, but now we're, we're transitioning to Koha. Um, and that's hosted by Bywater Solutions. And so that's kind of been a whole process too, is because they do a lot of customizations because Koha is open source, but every, you know all the tribal libraries, we just can't grab it because you know we don't know like the specifications, the technical things we need to have to post Koha and to customize it because it seems like they do a lot of programming things to um, customize. So we're just in the beginning phase of getting that set up and then um, authenticating our LinkedIn learning to um, Koha. So we won't have to send our patrons to go to one of the Yakima County libraries to get their library card so they can access LinkedIn learning because we tell them, well, if you go there, get your library card and then get the pin and anywhere you have internet access, you can um, access the e-resources. So that's what we're trying to expand on our e-resources because we have a lot of, um, and part, it's partly because there's not a lot of internet access outside of the city limits. And if they are getting internet access, it's not, you know, like the, fast speed that you would get in town through like the, you know, your local cable company. So um, they, we have a lot of patrons, they still prefer like the print books. They don't really like the eBooks, the audio books and things like that. So um, we try and think of ways to get people, you know, to get on the computer. There's still a lot of hesitancy there and um, older community members across the street from us, we have a um, elderly um, housing. And so sometimes they come over and they take our classes and um, we have, we had like some things going on. We had like uh, coming out of the pandemic, we had our roof, our roof was leaking, but uh, luckily we were able to obtain a grant to get that fixed. So eventually, hopefully the community members like will start coming back to take our in-person classes. So right now we're offering the online classes that we're getting through um, Washington State Library through the Microsoft 
um, certifications, Adobe certification. Oh yeah, Bumble Beacon. Uh, we uh, we had a little uh, advocacy from Washington State um, Library to talk directly to Mobile Beacon so that we could get some hotspots. Um, I think it was what, 11? So the representative at Mobile Beacon, he was able to talk directly to uh, text to, to say, yeah, we authorize Yakima Nation Library to get these, these hotspots through Mobile Beacon. So um, that's kind of um, where we started. Like uh, I was telling um, Kyle how we did that. Like, cause I was saying, I'm not, a sh I'm not sure if all the TechSoup vendors are aware that they, they are eliminating um, tribal libraries from accessing because it seems like we're way beyond, you know, we're on the wrong side of the digital divide. And that's what um, we're trying to get because a lot of people, they still just like to use their mobile phones and um, we try and get them on the computer and they're just like, oh, I got, you know. Um, we are doing working with Washington State University on some digitization projects to digitize, um, you know, some of the historical stuff with Yakima Nation culture, history, language, and things like that. Um, so we got a grant where we were able to fund a person to come in and work full time on organizing stuff. And Washington State University, they have the Plateau People's portal. And so a part of their land, land acknowledgement um, for the surrounding tribes is they help assist with um, gathering um, things from different archives to put on the portal. And so um, that's one of the other things that we're working on with technology. Um, a lot of people, they still like to search through our old newspapers, but they just like to look through the boxes instead of, you know, getting online. So we thought maybe that might be uh, kind of like an in-between to say, oh, well, get on the computer and you can see all the newspapers all at once. So uh, <laughs> that's, uh, so we're getting that going. Um, I think that's kind of all. And we just recently obtained some Google certificates. So we're going to um, start marketing those and handing out those certificates. Um, we had to apply for them. Um, as I'm on the digital inclusion uh, cohort, the, these, what we're doing here at our library, that's what I'm gonna share with the tribal libraries and then, um, probably inform more about what's going on with TechSoup and how to use it, how to apply um, different, different things like that. But we're in the beginning phases. Um, I'm not sure if any other tribal libraries have applied for TechSoup, um, but you know, I'm willing to help them apply for TechSoup. And that's kind of what we're doing right now. So I don't know if you have any questions for me. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I will we'll open it up for questions. I'd love to have a little bit of back and forth. I know a number of folks on the call are always thinking about, you know, the the one uh, we're hoping that this is just the opening, you know, making some of the products and services available to tribal libraries. But TechSoup also does a fair bit of what we call digital uh, digital resilience, digital transformation, so training and support uh, for either cohorts of organizations or sometimes individual organizations, like you said, around things like how do I figure out specs in order to be able to, you know, have, um, you know, uh, upload a, a certain um, product or service. And, um, and so that's one of the things that, you know, maybe think about a little bit uh, and let's see if there's other questions about what what do you, what would be the kinds of needs that you see either with the Yakima uh, Nation Library or with some of the other libraries that you've heard and you know we would love to hear a little bit more about the cohort as well that you're working uh, with Atalm on but do others have uh, questions they'd like to raise Don't be shy. 
This is James. Uh, hi, thanks so much for joining us. I'm curious to know, um, have you ever availed yourself of uh, other, you know, besides the products that are available on, on the website, have you ever used webinars or search forums, participated in blogs and that sort of thing? Or is it, is it mainly just about the products that you come to TechSoup for? Uh, well, it's been a while. So, so I haven't um, checked out like the blogs and the information. Um, I know what I did use in the past from TechSoup was, um, I think it's the, the instructions on how to install um, Office 2019, because um, it was a lot different than, you know, they changed it a little bit. I don't know if anyone's ever installed Office 2019, but those instructions that were on TechSoup, those were very, you know, they helped, they helped me get through it. And it was, you know, if you didn't understand how to install Office 2019 and then, how they broke it down and said, like, oh, okay. But yeah, um, I need to get back into TechSoup. And that's that's the thing. We've been out of TechSoup for a while. And I was, you know, kind of every now and then I would revisit it with different uh, TechSoup reps, IMLS, Washington State Library and say, hey, why aren't we, you know, we need to get eligible for TechSoup. But um, it wasn't until um, me and Kyle started talking again, because I did, I kind of forgot about TechSoup for a while because we weren't eligible. And then, so I wasn't referring to it, um, but somehow I got the instructions. I think that's just open, right? Those blogs and those webinars and things like that. That's right. That's partly why I asked, because you don't need to be, uh, you know, qualified basically to access all those other uh services and things like that. So I'm glad to hear that that was helpful for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, we have other resources like I think Web Junction, um, things like that we refer to also. Um, but yeah, that's um, TechSoup. That's what I have to re-familiarize myself with all the resources and then probably share that with the um, the cohort. So the ATOM cohort, there's four of us, and we're all at different levels of um, where we're at with computer labs, but we're just designing a playbook to try and help other um, tribal libraries, like seeing what, like how far I've come, and then how far, like the other one in the cohort, like I said, they're just at the beginning trying to get their internet and their computers and things like that set up um, and then uh, they have a consultant that's going to uh, come to each of our uh, libraries to do uh, to do like a like a needs assessment uh, one of the things here um, what I've noticed is uh, you know how we have uh, public computers uh, we're not all of our public computers are not really like on servers or anything they're just like individual stations um, when I first started here we had the Norton antivirus from the TechSoup and it would help uh, roll it back to like the original settings so like people couldn't change like the printer or like have their things automatically log in like their um, Facebook and different things like that. Um, but that's one of the things that I think we need to work on at our library is um, figuring out how to actually set up our computers in a public library setting, you know, because um, we go around to all of them, then, you know, we run all the maintenance individually but I know there's gotta be an easier way, like maybe using a server and then just, you know, running it through. We did get some computers through um, another grant through um, EdLab, I think, and they had deep freeze on it. Um, but the computer specialist at that time, she just kept saying that she was hitting roadblocks when um, people were trying to 
get on different things and she didn't really understand it. And then she ended up taking it off of the computers. And so I thought deep freeze was gonna be the answer, but I haven't really went back to deep freeze to see, um, you know, if deep freeze, you know, just because I don't have time, you know. I used to be the computer specialist. I tried to, you know, not, you know, be involved with all the computer stuff, but I do, you know, because I'm, you know, I make sure that we're signed up for the, the Microsoft and the Adobe and the Google and things like that. And then I have to just um, try and let my computer specialists do that. But that's the, that's one of the main things that I want to figure out right now is um, to simplify maintaining our computers, but at the same time, not um, putting roadblocks for our patrons because we have after school students, they like to get on the computers, play Roblox, different things like that. And, you know, I don't want to block them from that and behind some kind of security that we set up on the system. And that's kind of, that's kind of the main thing where I'm at, but other other tribal libraries, you know, like I said, the one that I'm thinking about in the cohort, she's at the very beginning, just trying to set up her internet infrastructure. Um, we were on a grant for um, TV white space. Um, but we got, we, I, I got a grant through IMLS ARP to um, get my TV, because the project, what we found was, um, they made it sound simple, like it was just something we put on top of our building, like setting up a Wi-Fi. But then we had a um, height requirement. So it wasn't something that we could just get on the building and install it. So I had to get an installer and I got that TV white space set up, but, um, the person who came and helped me install it, um, he was saying that we're already beyond um, TV white space. And I told him, well, what it's supposed to do was be able to shoot through trees. And uh, there's a housing community about seven miles away. We wanted to provide Wi-Fi in the basketball court. But he said that it's probably they're gonna be able to have access, but just like basic access. And then there's a homeless um, community that we were going to put our other um, antenna. And so we're kind of in the, waiting for him to come back to install those antennas at those sites to um, test to see how TV white space would do in our community, just to you know make sure that that um, project is implemented. Because we have the equipment, um, we just hit some bumps before the pandemic. And then, you know, so we got it up and now we're trying to see if we can, you know, solve anything with TV white space. But from what I hear um, from the guy who installed it, he's like, yeah, it's not going to be, um, you know, like what I'm thinking, like Wi-Fi, like where they can get on and, you know, watch a video, stream, different things like that, do their homework. Um, I'm not sure how it's gonna work. But that was another solution that I was trying to do with um, providing internet where people do not have internet access. Um, it, the, our reservation is, um, there's different towns where we don't have, um, where we don't have uh, tribal libraries. There's just us, um, there's White Swan. They have a public safety issue and the public library there ended up um, closing. So, and then there was a computer lab out there and they also closed. So I don't know. So now they don't have access to um, Wi-Fi and computers out there. And I think they're the ones with the most need. Um, we did get the emergency connectivity fund grant. So right now, um, Yakima Nation, they do have a internet service 
it's like a wireless service where you have to be able to see the tower to get a connection. So from this, um, from that grant, we're able to fund how different, they, they don't have to be tribal members. They can be funded to get their um, equipment installation fee and their monthly service through June to get on that, um, to get on the internet. So this started about um, a year ago. So I have 350 um, homes I can do that for and they come, they fill out an application and then they can get on their internet. And so that's about to come to an end um, in another month. So I still probably have about um, 100 slots where I can uh, get people connected to the internet. So I think people are just hesitant about getting here, but. But there are some transportation issues. So um, that's what I was saying. There's that um, people, they have to ride a bus to get here. And the bus doesn't, you know, loop around like in the biggest cities, like every 30, 15 minutes. So when I talk to people, they'll say, I'll say, just ride the bus, come to the library, just ride the bus. And they're like, you know, it'll take me like two hours for me just to ride the bus, just to get there. And, you know, and if you drove, it would maybe take you, you know, 15, 30 minutes. And it's, it's just kind of, you know, it just creates barriers. And I'm like, I don't understand, you know, we need to improve that. So I was trying to jump on surveys and different things like that too. And like people say, well, what do you think about the transportation? And I'm like, well, you know, it should go around a little bit more. We need more buses, things like that. And, but yeah, that's some of our other issues is transportation. And my white space, I guess that's to be continued. My antenna is up, but I just need to get it installed at the other sites now. I'm not sure if you following in the, uh, in the chat, but a couple of ideas that came up. One is, you know, and again, I know you, uh, Ashley did that, that one webinar, but uh, the major market, we have what's called the major markets team where we'll work with a groups of, of organizations, which in this case would be, you know, tribal libraries, and then also a customer success team. And, and I think uh, what, one of the things I get a sense of and, uh, is that, uh, you know, there, we'd love to learn more about the needs and ways in which TechSoup, because one of the things I think particularly in the last few years, is we have been um, really, you know, understanding the needs of of uh, our our uh, customers that we support. Of that, it, it, you know, a lot of some of it is just getting access to technology, software, hardware, services, but also some of it is just trying to integrate it all. Like you said, to think about, you know, all of your computers, you know, not having to individually put that on and 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 also with the move to the cloud how do you understand that in a way that also protects you know ensures that you have privacy and security and that's particular i know particularly important with libraries where you have so many different users on the same computer and you want to have you're striking a balance between having a, a certain experience for everybody similar but also like kids to be able to come in and have fun, right? They shouldn't be blocked from doing fun things, you know? And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, that I think there, I know that there is a lot of uh, desire within TechSoup, a lot of the folks who've just really been energized by um, this opening up to want to, to, to do more and learn more. And so, and that's something that you and I and, and Susan and others can follow up on, but, you know, I'm guessing that even as different libraries that are in different places in their technology journey, your story is probably similar to many others in other parts of the country and, and, um, and other tribes. And so, so we'd love to just have this be the beginning, not uh, you know uh, the start. And any other 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 questions that folks have? Well, hi, um, I have hi, Merida. Thanks so much for being here. I. Um, I was uh, listening to the sorts of things that you were saying. My name's Sarah, by the way, and I um, I used to uh, work on the library program here. And before that, I actually worked on the program at the Gates Foundation that put 
put computers into tribal libraries way back. Um, and uh, so I'm very familiar with um, the, that original program and the program that put uh, computers and internet access across the country. Um, when you were talking about deep freeze, um, I just wanted to let you know that that is still um, used in libraries and, you know, it was um, the resource that was created after the, the Gates Foundation staff, you know, created the way to lock down the computers um, so that the public could access and do what beat on the computers and still you could, you know, flip a switch and they could use them the next day. Um, deep freeze is still a thing. Um, it's made by Pharonix. Um, it's not, I don't, it's not a product that TechSoup has, but I think if you search around and look for, um, just on the internet for, uh, information around how to set up your public computers, I suspect you'll find something, um, that can help you. And if not, I think you should talk to your connections at, um, at Washington, at the University in Washington, because there's definitely people there, I would imagine, who are thinking about this because it's such a huge part of keeping um, public computers safe. Um, and it's such a huge part of how public libraries in particular operate that I would suspect you'd be able to find somebody who could help you. Um, and if not, uh, come back to us. I know that we have written extensively about um, keeping public computers safe and using um, things like deep freeze, but unfortunately our content is not very, um, it's pretty old at this point. I was just looking to see if I could find anything that had been updated in a way that I would feel comfortable giving you and I didn't, um, but stay in touch with us about that because that is such a big piece. Um, and also it's something for us to keep in mind as far as new product donations. Um, because I, I, as you were talking, it, it reminded me that that's something that is really useful for such a, an enormous group of libraries, um, not just in the U.S., but outside of the U.S. as well. Um, so I hope that's helpful. And please stay in touch with, with folks here about that, because I think you know, we can do some searching and try and find some resources for you as well. Okay, yeah, and that would... Um... Like, well, we're in the middle of this digital inclusion cohort. And so what HCOM is doing, they're supplying um, some funding for each of the four libraries in the cohort to, uh, you know, purchase new computers um, and to, you know, get it set up just so, you know, we can show how it's, um, how to implement it. And so that's one of the things that, you know, as we get new computers, I think that's what I want to have integrated before we, um, you know, get a whole new set of computers and then start doing it. Because it asks for like your like personalization, you know, it wants, you know, an email and it's like, well, these are public computers, you know, they don't, I right. just want them just to, you know, serve whatever they need to do on them and then roll it back to the original settings. Yep. Yep, that's right. Yeah, and I think, you know, Marita, we, Susan and I have also been talking and about ways in which we can also build on the digital inclusion cohort work and, and possibly even go out to try and get some additional funding to, to support a larger group and, and maybe even continue on uh, you know, if there are things that uh, still remain outstanding items you want to work on, that may be something that the TechSoup could could assist with as well. So, yeah. other yeah. questions, comments? Okay, well, we had a great turnout here for. Uh, eight in the morning for, for you guys, it's a little bit later for me. But um, thank you so much, Marida. I really appreciate your time and uh, really just great work that you're doing. And uh, really, you know, as you said, there are so many, not just the, li the library is really just, a, 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 you know, a, a vessel for the entire community, including the surrounding community to, to do a whole lot of things and it sounds like uh, you know when when you're thinking about you know wireless you know wi-fi connections for 
homeless people and for the elderly and, and computer. I mean, I think that is all really exactly why libraries are such an important part of our, our community. And, and uh, we, I think this was really helpful for everyone here to hear more. And uh, we will go back and put our heads together and see, uh, see if there's ways in which we can continue to, to work and support, work with and support the Yakima Nation Library and, and tribal libraries uh, generally. Awesome. Well, thank you all for uh, listening to, you know, our conversation. Uh, Kyle made it easy. He said I didn't have to, you know, do any preparation for a <laughs> PowerPoint and things like that. So there's probably some things I forgot, but yeah. You know, no, this it'll was, come this out was spot book. on. For sure. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Marida. <laughs>